Hello everyone, this is Chris Ostrowski from Avout. Thank you for attending this web video on how to create web services in Oracle Application Express. To find out more information about our organization, please go to avout.com. In this video, we're going to show how to create web services with Application Express 4.2. There's a lot we have to cover in these videos. So I thought it best to break it into multiple parts. We'll definitely have two parts, maybe even three, depending on how much time we spend on this introductory. In this video, we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about web services themselves, why they exist, why they can help your organization. There's other videos on my website that will allow you to get some background information about web services. The key thing to understand is that all web services can be broken into two very broad categories. REST-based web services and SOAP-based web services. REST stands for Representational State Transfer and SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. SOAP gives you a lot more flexibility when creating your web services, but they're much harder to code, test, and implement. REST web services are much easier to code, test, and implement, but they're a little more limited in their functionality. Key thing to remember when working with web services inside of Application Express is that the only web services that you can create in Application Express are REST-based web services. You cannot create SOAP-based web services in Apex 4.2. You certainly can consume SOAP-based or REST-based web services inside of Application Express 4.2, but the only ones you can create are REST-based web services. Let's hop into Oracle Application Express, and there's a couple of things that we need to do before we can start using REST-based web services, or I should say before we can start creating REST-based web services inside of Oracle Application Express. One of the key things is that you have to be running a tool from Oracle called the Apex Listener. If you're running in a standard Apex setup, meaning the simplest way you can set up Application Express, is that you're generating everything from the database. The database actually serves up the Application Express web pages, does everything right from within the database. That's the simplest way to set up Application Express. If you want to create your own REST-based web services, you're not going to be able to use that setup. When you go into some of the wizards that we're going to go through in this presentation, the options to use web services or create web services will simply be grayed out or not available on the screen. So you have to run the Oracle Application Express Listener 2.0. And if you go to the OTN site, the Oracle Technology Network site, uh, it's very easy to uh, download and get the Apex Listener up and running. So you can see as of March 2013, the latest and greatest version of the Listener is 2.0.1. And there's multiple ways that you can get the Apex Listener up and running. You can have it run in standalone mode. You can deploy it to a web logic server. There's a bunch of different options that you can use but this piece has to be in place for you to use it. If you look at my Oracle Application Express login, you'll see that the port we're going to is port 7000. 7001, excuse me. That's not the standard port for Oracle Application Express. If you take the standard defaults, it's 8080, and that's one of the ways that you can usually tell uh, if you're running in the simple setup where you're generating everything right out of the database. You certainly could uh, set up your WebLogic server or run Apex Listener in standalone mode to listen on port 8080 if that's what you want. But in this case, I'm actually running the WebLogic server. I've deployed the Apex Listener to the WebLogic server, and that's how I'm serving up my pages inside of Application Express. Once I have that situation, once I have that architecture defined and up and running, I can then use and create RESTful web services. Another thing that you have to run is a script that comes with the Apex 4.2 installation call Apex underscore rest underscore config dot SQL. This creates a bunch of tables inside your database that holds your Application Express installation that allows it to communicate with the Apex listener. 
that has to be run before you have any of the restful web service creation capabilities inside of Oracle Application Express. It's called apex underscore rest underscore config dot SQL. There's also a couple of things that we need to do at the instance level to make sure that we're set up to use RESTful web services. One of the first things that I do is I'll log in as internal. And once I log in, if I go to Manage Instance, and then click Feature Configuration. And then if I scroll down under SQL Workshop, you see I have this drop down box that says Enable RESTful Services. Let me highlight that for you. Enable RESTful Services. That has to be set to Yes. If I don't have that set to Yes, I won't be able to create RESTful Services inside my instance. And again, you won't see any error messages, you just won't see the options inside the wizards to create any kind of RESTful services or anything like that. So that's the first thing I have to do. So as my administrator, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a new workspace. I'm going to call it WS Demo for Web Services Demo. I'm going to use an existing schema that I've created for this particular guy called WS Demo. And I'll just put in bogus values here. Whatever value you put in for your password, you're going to be prompted to change it right away. So I just put in something like XYZ because it's going to ask me to change it as soon as. I try to log in for the first time. There's all my information. Yep, everything looks good. I click Done. I log out of my administration console. And then I'm going to log in into WS Demo. Once I put in my password for the first time, it's going to make me change it. So I'll change it here. And then it's going to make me log in again. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to create an application. So I'm, it's going to be a database based application. I click Next. I'll call this app WS Demo one. It's already using my WS demo. I'm going to create a home page, user interface desktop. I have the option of using a desktop or a jQuery mobile smartphone. For this guy, I'll just create using a desktop. Click next. I'm going to put a blank page. I don't want to put anything on my home page, so I'm going to add blank page there. You can see page number two. Click on next. Do I want to copy any shared components? Nope. Do I want to change the authentication scheme? I don't want to change anything for this demo application. What user interface theme do I want to use? I'll use the Scarlet one. That looks pretty good. And then I'll go ahead and create the application. So you can see I have my home page, my login page. Here's page number two that I just created. I didn't put anything on it. So if I click on page two there and I try to run it, put in my password again. Whoops, typed in the wrong one. You can see it's a blank page. So I'm going to go down here. Because I'm logged in as the administrator, or anybody who has uh, 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 administrator or developer capabilities, I have this toolbar along the bottom of the screen here where I can edit pages. I can also set up users who are just users of the application. They don't have uh, the ability to go in there and actually change any of the pages around. Obviously, when they try to run the application, they won't see this at the bottom. But I'm going to select Edit Page 2. And I do that, and I'm going to add a region. And my region's going to be a report, making an interactive report. And I'll call this DVD 
movies. I have a table set up where I have uh, a bunch of DVD movies that have the title, a rating, a date, a category. Uh, I'm going to make that into a report and then I'm going to take that report and I'm going to make it into a web service. So I'll just create DVD movies. I'll leave everything else here as the defaults. Click Next. Here's my SQL statement. Um, the data is actually on a different database. So I have a database link here. So I'm going to say select star from DVD movie at master underscore link. If I've done everything right there, when I click on next, it'll parse this statement and it'll tell me if I've got anything wrong in that. So I click next. Since I didn't get any kind of error message, my SQL statement is correct. Do I want to set any conditions for the region? Do I want a special authentication scheme for that? I say no. Say click region. Now when I run the page, I can see here's a whole bunch of movies, the different categories, the date added, and I can scroll through, do all of these things, take a look at all the different movies I have in my DVD collection. Not the most exciting page in the world, but relatively simple that we can uh, create this and uh, pull information out of the database. Now, how do I go through and say I want to turn this region into a web service? Oracle makes it real easy for you to do. So I'm going to go back into edit page here. And the first thing I have to do is I have to say that this is a public page. If the page that I'm going to turn and I'm going to take a region on that page and I'm going to turn it into a web service, the whole page has to be a public page. So I'm going to go into the old fashioned way of editing the um, page. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click this button here. It allows me to edit the page. And the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go over to security. I'm going to click on security and I'm going to change authentication into pages public. That's the only way as of right now you can set this up. Now once you've set up a public page and you create a web service off of it, there are other security features and that'll be for parts 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 if I continue uh, breaking this into different uh, videos, where you can set different security privileges. But for now you have to change pages public. That's the only way this is going to work. So once I click on apply changes, I can then go down into my region that I want to turn into a web service. So you would think you maybe edit the region here, but this edits all your regions. I don't necessarily want to do that. I want to pick this one region, and this particular page only has one region. It has DVD movies on it. So I'm going to click on the definition for that, interactive report, and along the top of the screen here you can see I have region definition. So once I click on region definition, I have all of these different sections, and you can see here's my region source and all the different pieces that are available to me. For this particular region, I'm going to scroll down to attributes. Let me highlight that so it's easy to see. There's attributes. So I click on attributes, you can see there's enable restful access. Pretty cool. All I have to do is set that to yes. And I have to give my particular page or my particular region on the page some sort of ID to uniquely identify it. So in this particular case, I'm going to call this first WS, first web service. I can call this anything I want. This is what I'm going to use as part of my URL to access this RESTful web service. Once I click on apply changes, if I then go back into region definition and I go back to attributes like I was before, look at that. I now have a RESTful URL that gives me access to my web service. It's as easy as that. If you've ever coded web services, you can really get bogged down in all of the different protocols and languages and XML and everything like that. I've created a web service based on that particular region on my page just with a few mouse clicks. Pretty cool stuff. So now I have this URL. How do I go about testing this web service to see if it's actually working or not? There's a great tool out there called SOAP UI. And it's a free tool. And let me get rid of this here. And let me cancel this guy. SOAP UI is a great tool 
for testing web services. Now you might think by, based on its name that it can only work with SOAP based web services and we already said we're working with REST based web services inside of Oracle Application uh, <coughs> Oracle Application Express, excuse me. But SOAP UI can handle RESTful web services also. So what I'm going to do here in SOAP UI is I'm going to click File and say I'm on a new SOAP UI project and again I can call this anything I want. So I'm going to call this first web service test. Under normal circumstances we would have to put in something here called a WSDL which is web service description language and that's SOAP based. I would have to put in the URL here. That's not going to work for REST. What we have to do for REST is click on this opens dialog to create REST service checkbox. So I click on that. I'm sorry my screen is not redrawing itself properly but it will as soon as I click on OK. So there's the first WS test and now it's asking for my service endpoint. Well my service endpoint is nothing more than the access URL that I just highlighted and copied here. Right? I just highlight this, do a control C, go back into my SOAP UI project, paste it, and I want to say extract resource and method from specified endpoint click on OK. I see all the parameters that go along with this. Apex created all of this for me automatically. I don't have to change any of this around. I can add more things to my methods here, but I'm going to use the get method, which is one of the standard ways of getting information for a web service. And I'm just going to use that HTTP get method. I'm not going to change any of the parameters here. So I click on OK, and now I get this new request one box here. I can now run this particular web service and see the information pulled back for me inside of SOAP UI. And how do I do that? I just click this red arrow here on the top left of the screen and look at that. There are all my all my movies that I just pulled from the web service in standard XML format. I can see it in raw format. I can see it in HTML format. I haven't set this up to have any JSON content yet, so it's just pulling it back in XML format. But I can certainly do that, and I'll do that in an upcoming video. That's as easy as it gets for creating and deploying web services. I now have a web service that's available to me based on this URL. I can test it using the SOAP UI tool, and again, this is a free tool. There's a paid version also, and that has more features. But the SOAP UI tool, the free version, is good enough for testing web services, REST-based web services, inside of Oracle Application Express. I can test it. I can see all the information here. In the upcoming videos, we're going to take a look at some of the cooler things that we can do with these web services, along with modifying them and changing them around for our exact purposes. Thanks again for attending this video online session. If you have any more information, please go to our website, avout.com. Thanks again for attending.